this young man from Auckland, New Zealand, Matt Stanish, gets to, uh, well, control these two teams through the noise and the tumult and the smoke. As the fireworks clear away, Matt Stanish set to control the IRB Sevens World Series final in New Zealand, 2007, Westpac Stadium in Wellington. Beautiful night in the harbour capital. Keith Quinn here with Dallas Seymour and Nigel Starmer-Smith. And really, this is a bits and pieces. Samoan team that has uh, had many changes from earlier in this tour, the earlier events, but they've played together superbly to reach the final. But Fiji are averaging 44 points per game and only seven against them in five uh, five games, whereas the averages against the Samoa are 24 to 17 points in every game. So, so every a little prayer there just to uh, set them right before the playing of this final. And the Samoa coach there as well, Kitimia Tafua. William Ryder, what role will he play in this final as it kicks off 10 minutes each way? The last game of two frenetic days of sevens action in New Zealand. The party couldn't be better, and the rugby has reached greatness at times. Will it be capped by the playing of the final between these two fierce Pacific rivals? And there's the man who might make a mark early for Samoa. Lolo Louis. So what have we got in store for us here tonight? It's Samoa against the odds and all the predictions who score first. Pesamino. Here's Dallas Seymour. And a great physical start here by Samoa. Really putting pressure on the Fiji line. And uh, exactly what I set up the final, uh, the semi-final against New Zealand and Samoa against uh, South Africa. A very physical start to the game, making Fiji work on defence. Some great work here. Shows the ball. Running at the line, creating pressure, drawing players, and very good support play. Samoa have been playing well all tournament, and that's a deserved start to this final of the Wellington International Sevens. The kick is good. The Samoan flags are waving. Huge support for them, as well as uh, Fiji, of course, in this country. The largest Samoan population in the world lives in Auckland City, and Wellington has a big population as well as Pesimeno with the conversion Samoa lead by 7-0. to nil. Terrific start by Samoa. They had to start well to really give themselves the self-confidence that they must have lacked prior to kick off. And there's another good blow for Samoa because uh, the two catches for Fiji at the kickoff tipped the ball one to the other, therefore it's a knock-on. City and square, square. This is a really intense match. I mean, normally you would say that Fiji would win the, uh, win the ball in the air with their tall athletic players, but Samoa, again, using a very physical approach and uh, calls a knock-on from one player to the other. And we just get a stoppage in play at the moment. A lot of security on the field. And this is disappointing. But we have an intruder on the field. So players stopped. Let's hope the momentum of the game is not upset by further intrusions from the stands. As the put-in comes in from Otto for Summer. Here they come again. Jerry Mifal. It's a turnover. And away comes Fiji, Nambalu Wangan. They come up towards halfway. And now Ryder tests them. Not prepared to go wide out on the touchline. There were two or three ahead of him. Play now at halfway. Mosesi Bola Bola number two. Someone slipping over the first couple of tackles, which creates space. Look at this. What a lineup here for Fiji. Saravanua number 11. But he's thrown down. 
and it's a clang ball for the Blues. Lost forward again by Fiji. Desperate defence. And that was a crucial error by the Fijians. They had three men outside him. Decides to go on the inside into three very physical and committed Samoan defensive players and turn the ball over. Three players are marked. That's a sin in the final. And I hope it doesn't come back to bite Fiji in the end. Touch. Pause. Engage. Well, around the ground, you might be able to hear that. Fiji, Samoa. Equal support for both teams here. There's Lola Louie. Now, this guy, just a youngster, new to the circuit this year. He's made a big impression. Looks for his support. Gets it from Shemaika McKelly. Halfway, it's a, a bit of dew on the ground here. They're slipping and sliding, especially that cricket pitch That's area, which is hard anyway. And here is the chance for Fiji. And here's an 85-year-old Fijian high chief watching. A lot of text messages when his picture, his image was flashed on the screen before a lot of text messages came from Suba and, and from all of Fiji back uh, to this man and those people who are with him. I'll tell you what, Keith, they stepped up a grade here, haven't they, Samoa? Because they've shown this uh, physical contact, they've got good ball retention, and for the moment, they've knocked Fiji off their pedestal. And so... This is a serious moment for Lolo Louis. One thing that's working very well is the work on Lolo Louis with a little injured shoulder. Hopefully, he won't go off. But the, the Samoans are really taken to the Fijians. What's working well for them is just that physical approach. The Fijians, on the other hand, are giving Samoa far too much respect and far too much room. And they don't like the physical approach at the moment, which is allowing the Samoan team to get in behind them. The game resumes. A fiery looking scrum there. The dancing feet are right out to halfway. Every comes now. The big pass deflected down. Ball for Samoa. Apello. Join the highmost. The phone. Away right. Here they go again. It's pretty fierce defense Get from both side. sides. Blue. Now, Faltour Otto. Number seven. Penalty there against Budango. And mostly seven. Budango played so well in the semi-final when they demolished New Zealand by 31 points to nil. And that sent an echo around this arena that they'd be hard to stop in the finals. Samoa doing well at the moment, leading by seven points to nil. And this is the tactic that's employed sometimes in a final. The legs are very, very tired. The whole body's tired. And it's a good way to get easy ground because the lineouts are very easy, uh, are very winnable in sevens with the lifting in the lineouts. But one thing that Samoa needs to be careful of is not to overdo the physical approach and keep those gaps right and keep the support play going. Wonderful support around the Westpac Stadium. Up goes the throw. Referee says it was down the line and is okay. Into the backs it comes now. Mika Senio halfway. Again ripped clear by the Samoan team playing really brilliantly here at the moment. And if you see there, Keith, doing that approach, they're pulling in four Fijian players every time, and that's going to tire out the defense. Officer Trevor Anders, number one. There he is, in support. He made the run. Uh oh. Penalty for Fiji. Now, William Ryder is with the ball at the moment. He chips ahead. Now, there's no one ahead of him. He's very good on the pickup, but the ball rolled away, not like a soccer ball, which he plays so much football. And uh, now the men in blue have it again. Interesting part there, Keith. There were no Fijian players in support when Ryder put that ball through. He's all by himself at the moment. Here comes Mikasinio. Oh, look at this. They have to make the big hits to stop this. And there's another one going in, but Ryder's not a, a man with a big frame. So that one didn't hurt so much, if you like. And they're able to maintain possession. That's uh, got to be a knock-on. Samisi Naivo. This man, six foot eight, six foot seven tall, a huge man, huge influence. 
in the other games of this tournament. Well, we've got one of the uh, Samoans injured at the moment, and uh, he looks out spark cold at the moment. But the uh, staggering thing is we've had, what, seven and a half minutes of this first period, and scarcely, apart from that uh, bola bola error in attack, it's really been totally dominated in terms of possession by the Samoans, and who would have guessed that? Christian, I think it's Lola Louis who's down. And he has been uh, such a key influence in only his third tournament, this youngster who has played such a big part in getting Samoa to the final. So let's look at this again. Uh, it is all oh, looks smash over the top there and he fell very heavily. And that's a good sign there that the Samoans are putting a lot of pressure and frustrating the Fijians and hope we won't see too much more of that. But one thing that's working very well for the Fijians, if you look on the wide shots that uh, for, for the Samoans, is that they're punching the Fijians and all the Samoans need to do is speed points. Let's look at this again. Look, maybe a forearm across the head. Lola Louie is the one in receipt. There it is. Well, it's uh, quite a fierce looking blow. Trying to get up and get into this game, you know, but there is a stretcher there, and there's a lot of good, sensible medical staff around him. But of course, we know, Dallas, about the fierce determination of these people uh, to keep going against the odds. Oh, very much so. When you, uh, when you have all your goals and you come here, you put all the hard work into a final, the last thing you want to do is go off and let your team down. He wanted to stay, Lolo Louis, and he goes to the sideline. He doesn't want to go off, does he? I, I, I wonder if he thinks he'll be a, he'll be a blood bin. Now he's back on again. Now, has he yet been replaced? I see, it seems not. It seems that Pata Otto is actually going back to the bench again. So that's, that's incredible, isn't it? So Alatasi Tupo. Yep. Crouch. The Touch. score is just Balls. a try Engage. and a conversion to Samo in the blue. In this IRB World Series, eight minutes gone first half. Remember, it's a 10 minutes each way final. Tessamino, who got the try number 10, forcing the Fijians into Get two and three at the defense Get there. Can they clip? There is uh, Louis. Again, that tactic working very well for the Samoans. They're pulling in the five Fijian players, and they got a penalty out of that one. If they got the ball out wide then, there could have been a chance on for a try. The fullback for Manu Samoa in the 15s game. A courageous player. Came into the sevens tour. Just this year, 24 years of age, Lola Louis. And the referee. Just having a word with him there about uh, his condition. He's a uh, terrific player. Damn. So the clock ticks down into its last minute of the first half. There is Trevor Rennes. And now bursting through Isabella Fone. Louis. Again, and now uh, Tupo, number 12. The ball is there. And cl flicked away by Trevor Rannis. Coming up towards halfway, coming up towards half time as well. Look at all the Fijians in there trying to stop this big physical confrontation. It's flicked out on the Fijian side. William Ryder has it. Now he's looking to clear it to open space. Here comes a big hit, but uh, flicked away and cleared by Saravanua. Now, can they get going just before the break? Budango, Ryder, he's just the man to level the game up before the break. Tupo, the ball is knocked down at the 22. The whistle goes. You happy, Garrett? And some great footwork here by William Ryder. Just couldn't quite get the pass away. And that could be a crucial 
play by the Samoan defence right on the stroke of half time. So there's a Fujian player down now. I know there's great interest right throughout the Pacific in these sevens games, but uh, when it gets to be Fiji against Samoa, the interest heightens. Well, I think the Pacific Islands are pretty well divided at the moment. I know it's live to you all there, and I'm sure there's scarce a person in the islands of Fiji and Samoa who is glued to this contest. And what an amazing performance it has been by Samoa. So much the underdogs and uh, bouncing back with tremendous spirit and determination. And as I said at the start, crucially, without their principal playmaker, Uali Mai, who's still on the bench. But uh, I've not uh, seen a Fijian side quite so, uh, I don't know, shell-shocked almost, I'd say, by what they're receiving. This is the latest injury, is it? This is, oh, look, he's bent over double. That's a Mossi Ludango. Here's the reserves bench, having to get the call to come on. Maseki Ndabu. I'll tell you what, uh, Keith, their newcomers for Fiji have performed well today, haven't they? We're looking at Vathango, which is how he's going off, but uh, they seem to have a, a conveyor belt of talent and athleticism, don't they? Well, that was a double hit. One down, one upstairs. And cleared the ball to uh, Ryder. Sarevi is on for Fiji. Now, let's see how he can influence this game, as he has done so, so many times since the last century. Since the last millennium, he's been around so long. Since 1988, I think his first performance for appearance for Fiji was. There goes Naibo. He is ruled offside by referee Stanish from New Zealand. And some great work by the, uh, the Samoan forwards there. Unfortunately, Sarevi couldn't uh, get that ball away. And we have number seven, Mika Senio down as well. Half time is called. What a battle it is. What lies ahead? In the meantime, just a try to Pesamino and a conversion. And Samoa lead by 7 to 0. <laughs> So here's Louis now, as the second half begins. Mick Desenio almost, I uh, feel like, ordered off the field by medical staff. So the drama now set to unfold. It's a very physical contest. Seven to nil. Samoa lead. And they continue to crash it up and commit the... Fijians to all kinds of tough defense. Tenerinus. What a start to the second half. 12 to nil. Samoans using the physical approach to great effect, keeping the Fijian defence line flat-footed out to Javarinas and a very strong work. Cover defence couldn't get there and look, one, two Samoan players in support. I tell you what, this is born of, what, eight years of frustration for Samoa, so often so close, but the determination, the sheer intensity of their approach is paying off. Fiji as yet have no real answer. They're the ones who are suffering the psychological burden. And the kick is successful for 14 0. Well, he's content for the moment. Timotea Tafua. His very strong family connections here to Wellington, New Zealand. Sarebi is back on the bench. The drama continues to unfold here. 
at Westpac Stadium in Wellington. So here's Fiji controlling the kickoff. So can they make something from this? No Serebi. Coming through now is Setefano Ducal. And breaking away again is Trevor Rennes. He's claimed now he's lost it. Mika Senio. And some great work here. Grabbed by Trevor Rennes and a little step onto the inside. Does it hand get on the ball? Yes, it's knocked out. Very good tackle there by Naevo. If they'd scored then, the game would have just about been over for Fiji. Mika Senio. Got to keep things going, eh? I thought he went off at half time. Got to keep things going, mate. Got to keep things going. Get the guys up. Are you confused? I think he went off and sort of went off and sort of stayed on. I think he sort of ignored what I think all of us saw as him being instructed to leave. But sure enough, he's still there. Will he stay on this time, I wonder? Goodness, what a battle. What a battle. See, that ground is heavy, uh, is hard, and he has fallen heavily. And let's look now. So Samoa have replaced him. Leo Palala and Mika Senior is off. Touch, pause, engage. So it's a very slippery ground as uh, Vudango comes towards uh, halfway. Get away, Blue! Naivo flicks it into the backs now, and I guess they will look to the magic of. William Ryder, if they can get out of this situation, because the Samoan defence so far not allowing the Fijians to break out in their traditional style. Ryder, number 10. Flicked on by Namba. Now here is the cow. Down he goes, number four. Set the fun of the cow. And here comes Budango again. Oh, this is tough going. Let it go, White! It seems like the Fijians have just run out of ideas. They can't get through the Samoan defence. If you look at any time a Fijian goes down, there's one, maybe two Samoan players there. If they lose the ball, they've got heaps of players out, and Fiji just don't have any forward momentum. Now, this is a sensation, too. They're going for the shot at goal. Now, I think they have to have a drop kick here, Nigel, don't they? Indeed, they do. If they get it, it's a brilliant move. It means Fiji would have to score at least three times. That's the key. That's why he's doing it. This will be his kick of a lifetime if he gets it. So Lolo Louis, I remember a few years ago here, Julian Huxley for the Australians kicked a penalty goal from about the same place in the seventh final. He's done it! it. <laughs> Look at that score! Great tactical decision. Get the water off. Get the water off. Mia. Hey. Coach Tapua made the decision, I guess. 70 to 0, and they're shouting pressure, pressure. They wanted to continue, obviously, Dallas. I was almost going to say that could have been the. <laughs> A, a bit of a, a bad error, but they got it over, and what a, it's, this could be the master stroke of this final. Put so much more pressure on Fiji as they break down the middle with William Ryder. They're trying to squeeze him out to the sideline, but he's still running with the ball, flicking it wide. To Saravanua. Now it's with number one out. Lost four, just as it looked like the time might come to Bavango. Can you believe that Ryder didn't go himself? He's lost some confidence in this final, hasn't he? Let's go. Come on. And there's some added pressure Let's in the go. final. He didn't know to, didn't need to go back inside. When you're playing the final, the time goes much faster. If you make small mistakes, little indecisions, they can cost you the game. And they've done that twice. They haven't used the outside players. Pause. Engage. Good stuff. Della Seymour from a man who's been in many finals. 
17 to nil. Someone leads. That's a forward pass. So a scrum back. Fiji ball. Clock ticks. 3:43. Looks like Sarevi is coming back on. Seven white. Seven. Seven. And there's an air of urgency in the Fijian team as they see the clock kicking down and Sarevi coming on to get themselves back into this game. They know that every second it ticks away takes away the chance of defending the Wellington International Let's Sevens go, title for 2007. And the man off the field is number seven, Emosi Vudanga. I think he didn't have the sort of right boots on. He was slipping and sliding all over the place. It's a bit dewy out there. Sarevi now. Here they come. Rocco intercept. It's the game ball. Casamino still going. Chased by Ryder. Big catch there, Palala. So now it's coming the other way. Oh, here's a chance for Fiji to flash the ball. Over halfway comes Rocco. Look at the determination of the chaser. And it's the big man, the cow, who gets in for the try. Set the fun of the cow. So they're on the board, but a long, long way. It's an uphill battle. The kick is good. It's 17 to 7. Still two scores required to get on terms. And here we see number 12, Rokon Bial, coming through, and he's working really hard. The Samoan defence is just chasing him to the death. He gets the pass out wide. The only mistake that the Samoan defence made here was to let him go under the posts. Two minutes and 15 seconds remain. If they get a score straight away, Fiji could still win this. Let's look at the importance of the retrieval of the kickoff. Sarevi, the master of this, stabbing it up to the 10 meter mark of the big tall man coming for the jump, and they've got it. No, they haven't. It's a knock on. It's a knock on. Referee is playing advantage. Get away, White! Here, eight. So here goes Louis again. Look at this courage from Samoa. They're in the lead, and they're putting it to them again. Pesamino. Some great pressure coming in from Samoa. They just playing the ball. First time they used the ball really wide in the whole match. It was on to kick to get down there and put the pressure wide. This means the Fijians have to run the whole length of the field against a very determined Samoa inside. Let's go! Well, the day had to come. It looks as though we're about to see it. A minute and 12 seconds remain. Five finals. This is their sixth. They've never won one. Is this to be the glory day they've dreamed of? We're within a minute of that now. Samoa lead by 10. When you think about their Rugby World Cup 15s when they won against Wales, not once but twice, and they win at the Hong Kong Sevens, this must ride up there with the great moments in Mamu Samoa Rugby. And they're still crowding in on the defence of Fiji, and Fiji have lost it. Forward again. The Fijian players get up and get patted on the head by the Samoans. They know they have this one. They are just stifling the Fijian attack. Yeah, I'll give you time. Fine. Seconds remain. Touch. Touch. No. Pause. 17 points to seven. Get out. That penalty kick shot at goal, which was over, has proved a, a vital difference. They've got a little caution still. Lost forward. Referee spotted it, playing advantage, kicked away downfield by a German foul. What does the referee say? He wants to play it. He wants to play on. Calm has been called for. The celebrations have started with coach Titimir Taupua. And I think this is a Samoan victory. Because whatever happens, they won't get a second restart. But they've got a lot of courage, Fiji, and they'll try to close that gap through the brilliance of Ryder. As he dashes to halfway, trying to make a last statement in this game. Welcome, Bial. And 
Well, look, they've almost come to a stop at halfway. I'll tell you what, Keith, I think... The lights are going out already! And maybe that's symbolic, as the try is going to be scored by Nassoni Rotombiao. But really, in this particular game, the lights have gone out on Fiji's winning chance. Unfortunate. Have been the conversion to make it all tied up. Let's look to the referee. He says it's over, which means it's a victory for Samoa by 17 to 14. And there's Rudolph Moores and Titimir Tafur and the players on the field. And this is a wonderful moment for Samoa. The lights might have gone out here for the fireworks, but they're on and dancing. Summer.